I'd like to call our meeting to order. Uh, tonight is Tuesday, September 5. This is our regular uh, council meeting for the month. For the record, uh, the day is Tuesday, September 5, and the time is 7 p.m. Uh, Councilman Larry Taylor is not here. He's on his way. He's up the street. He should be here in just a few minutes. We'll go along with some preliminaries until he arrives. Now, the first item we've got to consider are the uh, approval of the minutes, of which we've got six sections, of which four go back to our very voluminous budget meetings. Does the chair here a meeting of uh, most of these minutes be approved in a written order of corrections? Mayor Street, we're missing the uh, April 20th budget meeting minutes. April 20th? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that, when we met at uh, 9 o'clock at Town Hall. It was an yeah, all-day session. Yeah, they're probably still under production. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that correct, Mr. That's, Manager? That, that is the case. If you recall, okay. that was a, an eight-hour work session, and uh, our clerk's been working diligently on preparing those. But um, I think it's great that we got six, uh, six sets of minutes before us tonight. Yeah. Well, um, for instance, February... You know, when we had a February 24th meeting, right. budget meeting, mm -hmm. uh, our next meeting, I think, was the 31st of March. Right. It would have been nice to have had those budget meetings, minutes, for that next budget meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's the important thing about minutes, having them in a timely minutes, manner. Minutes are supposed to be timely. Instead, we get 92 pages of minutes well, at one time. And, and, to approve. And, and as you recall, we also discussed adding an additional position to that department this year to address this, among other issues. The, cha the chair is still waiting for a motion to approve the minutes so we have discussion. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. We have, then we will approve the minutes. Now is our discussion. We need our minutes in a more timely fashion. This happened last year, and I thought it might be improved this year. Well, we're up to last week's meetings. Minutes here. <laughs> okay. Is there further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor, indicate so by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. The minutes are approved. Okay, we have a number of items of consideration tonight, which we'll try to move as quickly as possible, because some of these things are just sort of uh, perfunctory. Uh, the first item we got, though, is a very happy thing, is the recognition of Sergeant Stephen Glover for receiving his advanced law enforcement certification, which is quite complicated to get such a thing. And I have the, the document here, and I'd like to ask uh, George Bottoms, if he would come forward with Steve and his wife and anybody else you want to bring with you. Joey, you have the whole, the whole smear. Bring everybody. And we'll we'll present this sheepskin to him. He'll go in the heck. Yes, And the next item is a presentation of the Little Free Library by uh, Emma Cahoon. Emma, would you come forward there? 
Okay. Have you state your name and address for the record? Can we bring it down to you? <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> um. My name is Emma Cahoon. Um, 611 Western Avenue. Can we take that thing out? Yeah, yeah there we go. There we go. Um, I wanted to, um, ask if you would let me do my little library. Um, because I saw some where my grandmother lived in Maryland. And what do you do when you go to, what, what are the free libraries? What, what, what do you do with them? Um, you grab books, like, you don't have to, like, pay anything for them. Um, um, you could put them back. Um, and I wanted to put them, um, by the church, by the town hall, and by the, by the, um, park. How are you going to pay for your libraries? Um, my grandparents and family are going to loan me some money. <laughs> <laughs> Emma has a, a letter that she's prepared that she's going to send out to family and friends and our church family and get people to help her to fund her, her project. Okay. Very good. Okay. You have anything else you want to add, Emma? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Council, have any questions? Does anybody have any questions for him? Ask him any questions. Emma? How much do you anticipate this project is going to cost you? Um, so do you want to show me the box? <laughs> Emma has picked out this box. <laughs> no, it's not going to cost her anything. Yeah. <laughs> Just hand it to Mr. Laird. He can pass some of them down. Thank you. So we plan to order the boxes. Okay. They're easier than building and, and more cost efficient. When you order the box, um, each box is $289. And that comes with the plaque. Each, each box has to have a free little library plaque on it that it goes along with Emma's charter that she plans to um, create. And uh, the, the box, when you order it, it comes with the plaque attached, which they're normally $40 a piece. Um, and it also comes with the first set of books to put in it. Although, do you want to tell them about your books you've collected? Um, I've been collecting books since Easter. Mm -hmm. So how many books do you have? Do you know? Two crates? Two crates full. Wow. And then how, how are you going to maintain your books, Emma? Mm. You plan to check on your boxes and maintain the boxes so they stay just like their original? So they don't dilapidate? <laughs> you're going to maintain them and you're going to what? Make sure there's books in them? Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you and checked with the uh, planning department see if there's any right away issues where you're going to put these things? Yes, we have. Okay. Is that okay, sir? Uh, yes, sir. If you give her the blessing, then we're okay with it. We also check with the DOT as many of these will be on their streets, and they say if it's not in there right away, that they're okay with it. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Is there one on Washington Street, or is it Hilliard at the Methodist Church? Um, she, I don't know if she's actually talked to the Methodist Church to get the location, but I would assume that it would be up and off of the sidewalk for safety purposes. Mm -hmm. We would like to put it next to the playground. Okay. Where, the, where the preschoolers go in and out. So that way they would have access to it as they were coming to and from school. Which So that's actually in the parking lot of the church. Okay. Okay, what's the wish of the council? Need a motion. Make a motion that uh, we allow her to have her project. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we uh, support uh, Emma Cahoon's little free library. Is there any discussion? There being none, all in favor, indicate so by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Okay. You're done. Thank you. You're welcome.
Okay. We're down to the fourth item, third item, a consideration of an application for the permit for a street event for the Nash County to request to hold a food truck event on the fifth Fridays in, 19, in 2017 and 2018. At our uh, agenda meeting last Wednesday night, this was discussed with a public hearing and there was no, no opposition from anybody. It looks like it's going to be like four times between now and the 2018. Uh, the chair here motion we approve this consideration. So okay. Second. Been moved and seconded. We approve the consideration. Any discussion? If there being none, all in favor indicate so we're saying yes. 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 Opposed no. It is done. Okay, item number D is consideration of an ordinance to allow sale of alcoholic beverages before noon on Sundays at licensed premises. And we read the uh, ordinance changes at our at our planning meeting the other night and there was some discussion for or against it, but uh, this issue has been spread all across the state. Almost every every municipality has approved it to this point. Does the chair here motion we uh, approve this consideration? Mayor Street, I move that we do not approve this ordinance. Okay. okay, is there a second? Is there a second? Is there a second? Okay, the motion fails for warrant of support. Is there an alternate motion? Here I make a motion to approve. Okay, there's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Yes. And there's a second. Is there a discussion? Okay, there being none, all in favor indicate so by saying yes? Yes. yes. No. Is there opposition? The issue passes. Item number E, a consideration of a zoning request for property located at 29 Eastern Avenue from A1 Agricultural to ONI Office Institutional. This property contains approximately 5.69 acres and is identified by <coughs> Nash County tax parcel number 3811960305. Uh, this was heard at our uh, agenda meeting the other night and a joint public hearing with the planning board and the planning board uh, recommended uh, that it be approved uh, for rezoning. Does the chair hear a motion we approve this consideration? So it's moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. We approve the consideration. Is there any discussion? There being none, all in favor indicate so by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, item F is related to item E, a consideration of zoning request 2017-02, request to rezone property located at 2122 Eastern Avenue from A1 Agricultural to ONI Office and Institutional. <clears throat> this property contains approximately 1.11 acres and is identified by Nash County tax parcel number 3811-960-7120. This as the previous issue was heard at our uh, agenda meeting last Wednesday night. <clears throat> There's no opposition to it and the planning board agreed to it unanimously. Does the chair hear a motion we approve this consideration? So made. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consideration. Is there any discussion? There being none, all in favor indicate so by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. <coughs> the issue is resolved. Uh, okay, the next item coming up can be related to it to G and I was a presentation of a certificate of sufficiency for petition petition <laughs> I can't talk petition for AP number two zero one seven zero one for property located at twenty nine Eastern Avenue. If you look at I it's the same thing for property located at twenty one twenty two Eastern Avenue. Our clerk has submitted certificates of sufficiency for these and they are adequate. <clears throat> so <clears throat> <coughs> the chair here motion we approve this consideration. So made. Right. <coughs> Second. <Yeah. laughs> Excuse me. Is there any discussion? There being none, all in favor indicate so by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, it is all done for that. And the next item, of course, is to consider a resolution for fixing a date for a public hearing on the question of annexation for the petitions. Uh, for AP 2017-02 uh, 
located at 2122 Eastern Avenue, which I think we've got set for our agenda meeting on September 27. This is correct. Okay. Anyone have any trouble with that date? The chair here motion we approve that date for public hearing. So made. Second. It's been moved and seconded. We approve September 27 for the, it's our regular agenda meeting for this hearing on annexation. Is there any discussion? <coughs> there being none, all in favor indicate so by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Accordingly, it is done. Okay, item K is consideration of fee schedule amendments. Uh, the first one deals with our library. If you looked at this, they want to change the calls for colleague color copies uh, from 80 cents to 75 cents each. Part of the logic, of course, we'll still make money. That part of the logic is people carry quarters and not nickels. And the other issue is to put a dollar a day fee on uh, on video games. That's not been coming back. Uh, is the chair here motion we approve this consideration? So made. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. We approve the consideration for the library fee. Uh, is there any discussion? I have a question about the video games. Yes, um, how many are we purchasing? Okay, and it's to attract teenagers to come and yes. use the library. Are there other discussion? Yeah. All in favor, in case somebody's saying yes. 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 No. Okay, item number two deals with parks and recreation. If you look at your fee schedule over here, um, actually, we, we're doing very little other than changing the language of what we're doing. But we've got two sets of fee schedule, an old schedule and a new schedule. Hank, will you explain what we're doing with shifting it from? Certainly. We have uh, two different fee schedules presented uh, for clarity. One's an old schedule, what it is before tonight's meeting, and, what, and then a new one of what's being proposed. Um, the only significant change on this fee schedule for Parks and Rec um, of, of a dollar figure is the adult athletics, the very first one on the new schedule. That's being changed to correspond with our youth athletics, which is a resident fee of free and a non-resident fee of $10 for all sports. Currently, the way we're set up, we have adult programs listed by team for basketball, softball, and co-recreational softball. Uh, these are programs that we're not offering right now and haven't offered for a number of years. Um, and with the fee structure the way they are, we're not in a position to be able to um, recruit and market programming in this way. So we have a recommendation from um, our Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Resources Director to make our adult athletics the same as youth athletics. The other changes um, are taking out the specifics on registrations and season starts and age groups and leagues for our different youth sports and just consolidating that down to just what the cost is for youth athletics and the, and the new table. So all that is still the same as far as cost. And the reason for that is due to the types of signups we have, we're not able to consistently say this is the league name with this age group. A lot of times we get different age groups in, and we have to adjust the, which which league it is based on the age, based on the number of sign-ups. So we want to make sure if we're going to put a fee schedule out there that we're actually following it. So that we thought the best thing to do, since there is a lack of consistency, is to just do away with that particular language and just have it listed as youth athletics. The other the other facets are the same uh, to the fee schedule, but the but the department is now on a smaller table. Okay. Your comments? All in favor in case someone's saying yes. So, Hank, all of this will be reworked? It, it will be exactly what it is in the new section. Okay. So, this one table here will replace okay. the other two right. tables. Right. Do I hear a motion? Somebody. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's done. All right, now we're down to number JKL, consideration of a resolution of payment of invoices. We've had a couple of errant things since we were last together. Uh, again, we read the same resolution. 
says, whereas North Carolina general statutes require a pre-audit be performed by the finance director before the town incurs an obligation, and whereas general statutes state that failure to perform the pre-audit requirement makes the contract agreement or purchase order void, and whereas general statutes further provide if an officer or employee of a local unit incurs an obligation or pays out or causes to be paid out any funds in violation of the pre-audit statute, he and the sureties on his official bond are liable for any sum so committed or dispersed. And whereas general statutes also provide if the finance director disapproves a bill, invoice, or other claim, the governing board may step in to provide payment and now therefore bill ordained by half of on behalf of the mayor and the town council that through this resolution, the town council, the, the town of Nashville town council does hereby approve the following invoices for payment. And there are three totaling $480.55. And we are further resolved that the copy of this resolution be spread over the permanent records of the town of Nashville, adopted this fifth day of September 2017 with appropriate signatures and attestations. Uh, the first one, to Napa and the second one to Strickland Equipment Company, I understand with shipping fees that came in after the fact. And the third one is a registration that got paid before a requisition was written, which was uh, requires some more supervision. Does the chair here motion we approve the bills? So made. Second. Is there a discussion? So these feet for Napa and for Strickland, because I did have a question prior to what you just read, okay, go. it's for shipping fees only and not for the purchase of that? No, it's just a freight of some kind. What kind of shipping fee you got from Napa to the town shop? Uh, it would be, a, it would be a, if a part was ordered specifically for the town shop and you had to get it in from some other source, that's, that's where the freight's at. Yeah. It's not the freight from him to the shop. Yeah, it was it's the freight on the part coming to him. Yeah. And you don't charge it on the, you show it broken down because that's what we did when we had parts business. Two quarts of oil, we got to pay a fee on. Maybe you can explain it to me later on, but go ahead. Okay. Right. okay. Other discussion? All in favor, indicate super saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. <clears throat> okay. Okay, and now we're down to item M, consideration of budget amendments. The first one deals with increasing professional and contract services by $200, which covers money that was donated to us for the music series that we did not spend. Uh, you want to do these collectively? I think you, we should explain each one, don't you? And then vote Okay, on we can do that as you go. Uh, who gave us that money? I believe that's the Nash Arts Council grant. That's Nash it. Arts Council grant. That was it. That's and, it. And I don't know why it wasn't spent. Yeah. But the money came in as a revenue. It has to be shown as an expenditure. So we went back over to contracting services in case we hired another band somewhere down the road. So it'll, it'll go back into paying for more music. Okay, uh, the next one. Uh, is a hope initiative money we receive uh, five hundred dollars from what have you forgot uh, I'm sorry nineteen thousand uh, dollars that money came to us in, in several forms ten thousand of it came in one check from the uh, UNC hospitals um, so all that's going in that's all donated money going to the hope initiatives and then item number eight uh, was money re we received from FEMA for Matthew related projects. And that just moved on through fund balance into expenditures that we'll make it sometime. Okay, that's 43000 and that was used for? Uh, those funds have not been used. We, we received those monies during the last fiscal year, and the federal government requires us to spend those monies within a certain time frame, which, which will require us to reappropriate that money into the current budget. So we have, we have the money in hand, but it wasn't appropriated with the budget. So it requires a budget amendment to put it in the budget so those funds can be spent to meet federal guidelines. Okay, and those was to be spent on what? Um, well, I know Brian's identified a couple of projects. Um, maybe you can speak on the specifics. Uh, yes, ma'am. 
Uh, we have to fix the slope at the sidewalk at Waffle House that got washed away. So we have to repair that. We have to repair our greenway, which is basically just getting the silt out from the Washington Street to the first bridge. We have to go down to Brake Street and fix that drainage ditch that leads up to the lift station behind Debbie Green. And then if we have any money left over, we owe the park two picnic tables that got washed away. So that's where the money comes from, and it's already so been. What was the last item got washed away? Two picnic tables at the Stony Creek Park. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are all things that we identified as problems from Matthew, and then they gave us the money in return. We have to perform those projects before this upcoming spring. Did that go toward any cleanup after Matthew? Because there were some areas that were. No, this this money has not been spent. It was given to us to do those things. Okay. Mm -hmm. The. Uh, buyout applications around town that's not any of this money is it no sir that's something totally different okay mm -hmm. okay. okay is the chair a motion to approve these three uh, budget items so so second it's been moved and second to approve the budget items is there any discussion there being none all in favor indicate so we're saying yes yes yes, yes. No. okay and the other item is in the manager's report always deals with moving money around this one line item which he can do okay hank your okay. report go ahead all right i'll, I'll start Mike, with the um, budget amendment budget amendment five uh deals with the 10 590 account this is the stormwater um department five hundred dollars was moved uh increase to materials and supplies our 3300 line from 7400 our capital outlay equipment we ended up not needing the full 200,000 to buy our leaf truck uh, fortunately, we were able to get a discount on that through a state contract Mr. Baines was able to find. And what we did was we pulled $500 away um, to help offset some of the costs for the tax bills this year for the postage costs. So that storm water is a piece of what's on our tax bills. Um, we have the tax bill is a little different this year. Instead of being sent on a postcard, it's being sent on an actual letter. Um, it includes the apple alarm taxes, the municipal service district, and the storm water fee. And we thought it made sense that um, since stormwater was part of the revenue for the tax bills, that the stormwater department be charged a percentage of the cost of the postage to mail up those bills. So that's what that $500 reflects. Um, the stormwater department is a little muddy this year since it is a new department and we're still trying to figure out what the full annual cost will be. You remember from our, our budget sessions, the only thing we put in as line items for stormwater were the personnel costs for one employee and this capital outlay line to buy the leaf truck. So hopefully in, in the next fiscal year, if we identify costs better, we can add in the operational costs for things like repairs and materials and supplies. A but third of that was contingency of, of the stormwater. Of the stormwater revenue. Mm -hmm. but, but if you remember, that, that was just the heading we gave to it. The stormwater contingency money was really money that was being put aside as capital reserve for a street sweeper and for the purchase of a replacement leaf truck um, and for that employee if it put a one employee for the department yeah right mm -hmm. um, and in other business um, our finance department's been working um, very diligently up front they've un undertaken a lot of challenges in the past couple of weeks being short staff uh, we have successfully been able to identify a person to um, Fill our customer service representative position. The uh, offer's been extended to them, so hopefully they'll be beginning their employment in the next few weeks. We're still looking to fill the senior customer service position uh, at this time, uh, but it's something that we're working through, and I appreciate your patience uh, while we work, work through that. Um, and the police department, um, uh, upcoming we have on September the 21st, uh, our second annual uh, fundraiser for the West at West Ridge Grill for the Hope Initiative. Um, that'll take place from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. And on the 23rd of September, we're having the second annual recovery rally at Glover Park uh, to help support the Hope Initiative from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and uh, what was that date again? For which one? The, um, the the last one. The last one is September the 23rd. This is the second annual rally for us. Um, as you know, we've also been working on the grant uh, application along with Patsy McGee from Nash County for the Elm Street project. That has been submitted. 
Um, the total cost of that grant was around $892,000. Um, we, of course, don't know if we received that grant, but the only match for us was the engineering cost to get this off the ground. So uh, once we hear that we've received it or did not receive it, you'll get an update. But Is that in addition to the 200000 for the uh, stormwater work under the jail? That, that, that 200000 will be part of that 892. So the way that grant works, um, we work with the county on that grant. Uh, we are the official applicant because they only wanted one applicant. But um, it's, it's a project that benefits really us and Nash County. Um, it includes that drainage project under the jail. It also includes addressing issues with their parking lot. They've experienced several sinkholes that are attributed to Hurricane Matthew. So we saw an opportunity to work together on something that was mutually beneficial. Did the engineers ever decide how far that washout went up the hill? Last I heard, last I heard, they were still looking. Um, the, the scope of the project starts at Austin Street, and then it heads um, towards Stony Creek along the Nash County side until you get to Body Street and it eventually crosses the street to the other side and goes by their parking lot. Um, there was a lot of question of the Richardson uh, parking lot and how that factored into it, but we don't have any um, easements or right-of-ways on that property, so that's why we're starting at the point we did because that's totally in our control now. So, so this ditch in question, does it start west of Austin Street? It starts on the county side of Austin Street. Okay. Um, by Miles Glasgow's old building. Okay. And then it goes towards the creek. Okay. Yes, sir. So and how much of it is the town's problem? Or it's the town's problem. Well, ultimately, I think all of it's the town's problem. But it, but the part that we identified in in the actual st stormwater drainage issue in our work sessions, it'd be between two hundred and two hundred fifty thousand dollars, depending on engineer estimates. And that's the part on Elm Street right behind the jail going over to the parking lot and right. down to the creek. But this is not a the type of situation where they're gonna where Golden Leaf will say we approve this part of the grant or that part. It's it's an all or nothing type of deal. So this is what this is the way we were encouraged to apply for it. And we've heard nothing but positive news up to this point. So But, what? Sh but should we not get the grant? We are still on the hook for getting these repairs, right? Well, we haven't obligated ourselves to do that at this time, but at some point it'll be it'll have to be done. It's it's our most expensive stormwater drainage project we ha we've identified. So, but if we do that, we'll do only the part that's on town property, because all that's the right. stuff in the park lot he's talking about that's not on. That's on county property. Yeah, that's right. Uh, no, we we'll still need to do it, but we're not on the hook that we have to do it. We just have to. The, oh, the oh, the eighty ninety two. Right. Uh -huh. that, that, of course, that'd be split between us and the county. But, okay. Um, you know the, what? What we would have been, already identified is what we would be obligated towards. We're not doing anything that obligates us to do any any more than we've already identified. But they're all related. They're all related expenditures. Although there's two different governments that are going to be responsible for things on their side of the property line. Okay. So it's not expanding our own our own responsibility, but at some point, if we do not receive this grant, it is something that we're going to have to um, have serious discussion. About. Have, have to look at right because mm -hmm. uh, it's and it's not that the drainage itself is so expensive; it's the fact that we have to tear the road out to be able to access the issue. Yeah. You're right. So under the jail is two hundred thousand or two hundred and fifty, which. I, th that's just it, but it's it's something I can't identify because the engineer estimate was total for one thing so we'd have to break that out to find out um, a, a cost uh, for that one specific aspect of it we had engineer costs on the whole project the whole thing right. yeah. so I'm, I'm estimating on that and then just like what we had at the work session that was a very rough estimate from stocks engineer that was the 280 number was that's it? right yeah I mean I don't know how it in front of me but it was in that ballpark yeah yeah anyway it's a massive project um, Other comments? Um, I'll point out, you know, I I got married on Sunday, and going along with that, uh, I'm here tonight. But <laughs> <laughs> but I do plan on taking a honeymoon in the next few days, so I'll, I plan on leaving on Friday, and I'll be gone through the next Sunday. So I want y'all to know I'll be uh, taking a cruise, so I'll be 
out of Nashville for a few days. Hold on, just where are you going to cruise? Well, that's that's up in the air right now because we planned this several months back. And <laughs> unfortunately, we're supposed to be flying into Miami, so I don't know where that's going right you now. You might not want to go to Miami <laughs> right now. I may not. You might not want to go to Miami. So, you might want to change that we, to Alaska or something. <laughs> we, we may have to make some plans, but... Um, Wait that's what hurricane got, season time. <laughs> that's what we've got scheduled right now. Uh, and if you hadn't seen it already, uh, Mr. Hassel brought with him a nice plaque that Stocks Engineering provided us that we can hang on the wall. Um, Brian, you want to show that? Yeah. It's um, a copy of the Nashville graphic uh, from our groundbreaking of our, um, our, our drainage project. Um, $2.6 million. This is part of the history of Nashville now. Yep. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Council comments. Mr. Taylor? Uh, Mr. Raper, you still nervous? Or did you Not get over the nervous? Not anymore. It's too late now. Okay, he was real nervous at the wedding the other day. So <laughs> he's all right now. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for being being late tonight. Uh, no excuse. Monday, Monday holiday kind of threw me off. And I'm sitting at the house doing nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Charles, for calling. <laughs> it's good I didn't live two blocks down the street. Uh, well, apologize, glad you're here. <laughs> apologize to the council and to the public for, for not being here on time. But uh, the holiday just got me this time. I, I apologize. But other than that, no more comments. Mr. Taylor? Well, I'd like to compliment uh, Steve Glover on his recognition and completing his course. I'd like to... Uh, Compliment Lou on the hard, diligent work she put in getting the minutes that we have tonight. Even though we may still be short some, um, we did we did talk about hiring a, an assistant to her, and maybe it shows we do need the assistant. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is in? Um, yes, I had a question about the distinguished budget award that you're working toward. Sure. What is it that about? That, yeah, that is a um, an award given out by the Government Finance Officers Association based out of Chicago. Um, it is awarded annually based on uh, meeting certain benchmarks and um, excellence in budget. And it's something that Nashville, as far as I can tell, has never received. It's, it's given out annually. It's not one of these things that you apply for, like the top three or so get this award, it's more about do you meet a certain standard. Um, it's from, from what I can recall, 28 local governments in North Carolina received the award last year. Um, that's counting cities and counties. But um, it, it's mostly larger agencies, but it really shows um, you, that your budget is an effective communications device, operations guide, financial document, and uh, a strategic plan for the town. So it's something that, you know, from a performance standpoint, I've tried to work towards since I've been here on the job. Um, but it shows that it's a transparency piece to the town, that it shows where your resources are going. Um, it's really meant um, so that the public can read the budget and have a clear understanding of how are my dollars, how are my tax dollars being spent, what are you using for it. Um, I want to educate myself on how town government works. Um, so it's a, it's a complicated process. It's something I've, I've really worked on myself with some help from the department heads on some of the narrative pieces of it here and there. Um, it's not a small undertaking, um, but I think it's something that's worth undertaking for the town. Um, I'd like to apply this year. Um, if we don't get the award, my understanding is that the next year is no cost to the town. So I, I, my, my thinking is that we probably not get it this year because we haven't applied before and know all the things we're looking for. But there's a, a very complicated criteria guide to go through of 27 different ways you're scored uh, with your budget document. So, and, and what's the cost of the tail? $280. Do we there. get to see the document before it's submitted? I can make that, make that arrange. Um, that, that's my plan. What's the, what's the deadline? The deadline is 90 days after the budget's passed. So September 30. That's coming up to the very end of September. Um, and you can submit it online, so we can wait. We can wait to the last minute. My goal is to get as close to the award status you need to be, submit it, get some feedback on it, and then 
hopefully submit a successful document next year. Um, but as you recall, I gave you a, a, a full budget document last year um, detailing a lot of things beyond just the spreadsheets that we talked about in the work sessions. This is that same document, but even more expanded and detailed than that was last year. So that's, that's what we're talking about. Um, so some of the things that you're submitting, we did not um, use during the budget process. Those are things that wouldn't exist before you pass a, a budget. Um, when you're when you're doing budgets during a work session, you're doing things like revenue forecasting, projections, making estimations of what costs are going to be, and discussing what things that departments are requesting. Uh, this is a very different process. This is almost retrospective. You pass your budget. Now that you know in, in definite terms what you what you pass and adopted, this is a detailed explanation of. Um, in, in graphic form and narrative form what you actually have done so it's it's looking back but it's taking all the work that we've done in the work sessions and laying it out in a way that a citizen can read it and understand what took place because as y'all know just in work sessions sometimes just seeing spreadsheets we have to discuss what different things are um, a citizen wouldn't be able to read that and be able to easily decipher what different things mean this helps break that apart So we do get to see it. You'll Absolutely. Cl you'll click us a copy before you click it away. Absolutely. Okay. That'd be good. Maybe we need to go have a mutual reading. We can do that. Yeah. Be fun. Okay. Other comments? That's it. That's it. Okay, folks. Um, you know, we got a uh, hurricane coming at us of biblical proportions. And there's no telling what kind of... You've got a hand raised out here, man. i got what? It's easy. I've got what? I, well, I can't see through the post. It might be meant to be that way so you won't throw anything at me. <laughs> you step out, step out behind the post and identify yourself. I'm Gloria Smith. Hi, Gloria. Will you, will you come to the uh, podium, please, no, so, so we can no, get you I'm recorded? Stand right here. It's an easy question. Under the items for consideration... Uh, talking about the sale of alcoholic beverages. Right. I see where we passed it tonight. Yeah. When does that go into effect? Well, according to the legislation, it goes into effect upon approval. Okay, so immediately then. It'll be immediately. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what okay. But anyway, as I was saying, we got a hurricane coming at us. Nobody knows where it's going to go with a disaster. But I'd advise everybody to uh, stay in touch with all the warning services and get yourself equipped for it because we don't know where it's going to come. All of our emergency response people, though, are getting geared up for this thing, so we'll do what we have to do to get through this one. Hey, congratulations on your wedding. Thank you, Mary. Uh, it was a very lovely event, and I hope you have a nice cruise on nice calm water. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you very much. All right, uh, the chair here motion we adjourn. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? If there being none, all in favor indicate so much saying yes. Yeah. Yes. Opposed? We stand adjourned. <laughs>